Welcome to The Bo Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. Oftentimes, Hollywood will put out a product that is both fantasy and reality at the same time. These creators have great imaginations, and they push the boundaries of our own sense of belief. We ask ourselves, could this really happen? Or did I just get wrapped up in the plot? There are a number of apocalyptic plots out there, but some seem to be more real than others. The Book of Eli was all about Denzel Washington's trek across an apocalyptic America where anarchy had taken over, and he was destined to deliver the one remaining copy of the King James Bible to the West Coast before thieves got it from him. The Night of the Comet, The Road, Children of Men, I Am Legend, A Quiet Place, The Living Dead franchise, The Hunger Games franchise, Interstellar, and The Day After Tomorrow all have apocalyptic themes. These films many times involve a natural disaster, like a comet hitting the Earth, or even zombies taking over. The Walking Dead series certainly piqued the imagination of many with its success. We have to ask ourselves, could aliens really come here and take us hostage? Could zombies roam the Earth? And if any of this happens, how would we respond? Would our government know how to act? And would they curtail our freedom in the name of protecting us? Well, those themes are traversed in the recent HBO Max series, The Last of Us. I remember hearing about it even in some conservative circles because of the scenarios that seemed to be a little too familiar. An outbreak of a pandemic, a panic in Bedlam, massive government power grab, forced camps, an organized group of freedom fighters, and a mere fight to survive. We experienced some very similar themes in the pandemic of 2020. So I feel like this series came at an interesting time, just as we began to go back to some normalcy of life. What I'd like to do today is explain this series and its real world possibilities, since these apocalyptic themes can give us a primer of what may actually happen. You may recall that Event 201 was a pandemic simulation exercise, completed just before the real pandemic hit in 2020. Sadly, many of those simulations came true, and it made us wonder, if we knew it could happen, why were we so unprepared? If Johns Hopkins and Bill Gates were funding this simulation, why were these collaborators not getting everyone on the same page? While The Last of Us may be fiction, Perhaps its imagination of real-world scenarios can be a lesson and a warning of what could happen. So I'm going to approach this analysis through that lens. The Last of Us was actually a video game before it was an HBO series. The game was created for PlayStation 3 in 2013 from the developer group Naughty Dog and is set in 2023, 20 years into a pandemic caused by the mutated fungal infection Cordyceps, which is an actual fungus. The fungus causes the infected to turn into zombie-like creatures destined to infect others and collapse society. The game itself was widely acclaimed, some even calling it one of the greatest video games ever created. The plot centered around Joel, his daughter Sarah, and Joel's brother Tommy, who reside in Austin, Texas, and try to flee the chaos that ensues in the outbreak and the aftermath of it. Sarah is shot by a federal soldier and dies in Joel's arms. This is Joel's first taste of friendly fire, so to speak, and the bitterness of his loss stays with him the entire series. Any survivors have been forced to live in totalitarian quarantine zones, or QZs, run by FEDRA, the name of the authoritarian force that makes the rules. However, we learn that some weapons have been acquired by a rebel militia known as the Fireflies, a group opposed to the quarantine zones. Joel is a smuggler, so the Fireflies promise him more munitions if he helps smuggle a young girl, Ellie, across the country to another settlement of Fireflies. Joel is still trying to find his brother Tommy, whom he thinks is still alive somewhere out west. So for Joel, as much as he doesn't want to take Ellie, He's almost forced to. But then we learn why Ellie is so important. She has been bitten by one of the fungus-infected people, but somehow her infection doesn't spread. 
So it's believed something about her is immune. So if she can get safely to her destination out west, then they can study her and begin to create a cure. The TV show really becomes about the relationship between Joel, who is still haunted by losing his daughter, and Ellie, who becomes kind of like a second daughter to him. In both of their cases, this becomes a tale of survival, where both Joel and Ellie have to lean on each other to live another day. As far as the plausibility of this game, especially the infection theme, there's some writers from Scientific American who praised it. There's quite a bit of combat in the game, which was also noted and praised by critics as necessary rather than gratuitous. It is not often that a video game is adapted to television, but The Last of Us has been particularly lauded. Viewership was really good too. It started out with 4.7 million viewers on the first day, blooming to an average of 30 million viewers within six episodes. This was a big success for HBO Max. Now I want to break down some of the plot and character development, because this is where we find the real world scenarios. The whole series is about Joel, hardened by his past, but very self-reliant. And he finds himself becoming more attached to the defiant Ellie, who feels displaced, a kid who isn't getting a normal childhood at all. Her lack of family takes an equal toll on her. So the relationship between Joel and Ellie becomes symbiotic. Each episode is a fight. If they aren't fending off cordyceps infected zombies, they're having to fight nomads and rogue civilizations who don't know them or care. Everything is a desolate war zone. We see some of our flourishing cities like Pittsburgh or Kansas City look like depressing ruins. When it comes to this cordyceps fungus, it is a real life fungus that mainly attacks insects or arthropods. It will eventually replace the insect's tissues. Cordyceps have actually been used in Chinese medicine to treat diseases of the lungs and kidneys and even treat chronic fatigue. So at first, this fungus cannot affect humans in the way it is depicted in The Last of Us, whereby a living human is overtaken and aims to infect other humans, as opposed to awakening an already deceased human. That makes this part of the plot technically flawed. But listen to how this scientist describes cordyceps and how that spawned the imagination. So they can communicate with each other. Fungi mate and they signal each other through pheromones. And fungi that form mycelium can orient towards each other and signal that way. So they can signal to each other in the same species. They can also produce uh, chemical warfare to ward off other individuals in the microbial world that might be encroaching on their substrate. I mean, we are fascinated with any sort of end of world scenario, aren't we? Maybe it's a reflection of our times, but um, certainly the idea that a fungus that already has this capability in a non-vertebrate host uh, uh, taking over in a human host certainly grabbed a lot of imagination. It's just fascinating. I, I, I think it's, it gets to the fundamental thing about being human, losing your own autonomy. So what she says at the end there about losing your own autonomy is a crucial part of not just the cordyceps infection, but really the heart of The Last of Us. Because yes, this fungus was overtaking human beings, which, although it can't happen in nature, is a terrifying thought. But then the reaction to the outbreak, the panic and fear and how to contain it, also creates a loss of autonomy. The ability to live your life freely, to move about, and have contact with one another. Think of that real-world parallel to the COVID pandemic. Our governments, both in America and abroad, had different approaches. But most tried the notion of quarantining and separating the population. But just as importantly, the TV show's outbreak spawned a military like authoritarianism from the top. They don't care if they kill you. It was necessary for survival. The lines got blurred between innocent and evil, between infected and uninfected. FEDRA, the authoritative police state in The Last of Us, which actually stands for Federal Disaster Response Agency, constantly asks people to show proof of uninfection. The response to FEDRA 
are the Fireflies, a rebel militia who are for freedom. We the People has been graffitied on trucks by the Fireflies. They oppose these quarantine zones and consider Fedra just as bad as the fungus. Keep watching at epochtv.com forward slash The Bow Show.